All Get right, out of this. let's uh, let's dive into uh, this recap right quick. We'll uh, we'll we'll go quickly with this. I'm not going to deep dive as much as we typically do. Ravens get the win, forty-one to twenty-five on Thanksgiving Day. We did not have a show on Friday, so we didn't get to talk about these. Uh, Deshaun Watson had four touchdowns in this game, and of course, Matt Patricia and the GM there both let go on Saturday morning uh, in the fourth quarter of the Michigan loss to Penn State, which I found uh, very comical at the at the very least. So. Um, you know, Texans look good. Uh, the Lions obviously did not. I would love to get Matt Stafford somewhere else because, my God, he is just wasting away. And you know he's got talent. You know the boy can play. But, man, that team is a dumpster fire, and I don't know who they can hire in to fix it. So I don't know. No, nobody. John Elway needs to get on the phone right now. He needs to call the owner. She's like a 90-something-year-old lady and say, listen, let me take Stafford. He's been good to you. Don't Don't make him go through his glory years with this. Let me let me have this kid and then let me do something with him. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically. I mean, that's a, they got to get him out of there. They got to get him somewhere decent. Um, and and the Lions just need to to restart. Just, oh, you were talking about who the Colts gonna go get? That's somebody the Colts could go get. Yeah, you know, you got a point. There's there. a bunch. Of, there's gonna be a bunch of quarterback movement this year. There's gonna be so. a bunch. I think you're. Uh, I think you're right about that. Uh, Matt Miller said Fuller just got popped for Peds. I had him and Tyreek and uh, in fantasy and needed every single point. Uh, I did not realize that, but, I, I mean, it would make sense. Six receptions, I got, 171 yards. I got, I got a text yards. today that, that Fuller, or while we were going, that Fuller got pop for PEDs. Interesting. Oh, well, at, after that performance, I could see it because he was kind of hu- superhuman in that game. <laughs> so, <laughs> I could see it. Like, they say these tests are random. Yeah, bullshit. I don't buy that at all. I don't buy it at all. Uh, the Redskins, uh, whatever they are. The football team. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, forty-one to sixteen win over the Cowboys. This was not even close. Uh, they destroyed the Cowboys. Antonio Gibson, former Memphis running back, twenty carries, one hundred fifteen yards, three touchdowns. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Hey Zeke, that's how you run the football. That is how you run the football. Amari Cooper had six receptions for one hundred twelve yards and one touchdown for Dallas. Uh, but that was about the only thing that they had going whatsoever. This is a bad football team. Bad football team. Yep, you got it right. Yeah, you think Mike McCarthy only last one season there? No, because Jerry Jones is hard headed. Because that would mean Jerry would have to admit he was wrong. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. You're probably right about that. Tell you, man, these guys, these Egos. guys, they just—they're so afraid of anybody thinking they made a mistake ever. Man, I'd be—I'd just be trying to win, especially if I was I, Me too. Jerry. Me God. too, man. I don't give a damn. Um. Hey, so we got to let's see. Give Detroit Lock and Hinton for Stafford. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Casey said, I called that Gibson career day, and Havoc said Matt Ryan is more likely to go to San Francisco. Uh, and Matt Miller. Matt Ryan's numbers will go through the roof because that's what he, yeah. Kyle knows how to use him. He knows how to use Kyle. Well, we're, we're moving into the Falcons, so let's, you know, Matt Miller said Matt Ryan is criminally underrated now. He used to be overrated. Uh, the Falcons, I mean, put a whooping on the Raiders, the likes of which we hadn't seen in quite some time, and it was not Matt Ryan. Like, this was just overall uh, a complete and total whipping. Yep. 43 to 6 in this game. Matt Ryan was only 22 out of 39, 185 yards. He had two touchdowns and a pick. So it wasn't, it wasn't him, but my God, at some point, Vegas put in Nathan Peterman <laughs> at quarterback, and he didn't throw a pick. Like, he, he had five uh, uh, attempts, he completed three of them, he did not throw an interception. I was kind of surprised. The Falcons held the Vegas rushing attack to 14 carries and 40 yards. I was shocked by this game. Like, I, it's not the, like if if Vegas had lost the game, that's one thing. But 43 getting, to six getting destroyed like this by a bad football team, unacceptable. I mean, the Raiders were were fighting for a, a playoff spot. Like, unacceptable. Ah, oh, my God, and and this is, you know. Like I understand they were they were playing the Chiefs recently and they you know they showed up against the Chiefs but my God they didn't show up for this game. Uh, Chargers go up to Buffalo they get beat twenty seven to seventeen. Justin Herbert fifty two pass attempts completed thirty one of them three hundred sixteen yards one touchdown. The numbers look good, eh? But uh, but they get beat again. So the Bills are sitting at eight and three. Uh, they are getting ever so closer to winning the AFC East uh, for the first time in what like twenty years. I mean it's been a long long time long time. Uh, the Giants get a win over the Bengals. That moves them into first place in the NFC East. Uh, the Bengals are basically uh, nothing without Joe Burrow. Uh, 
it, without Burrow, this team is about as boring as you can possibly get. Is that is that fair to say? No reason to ever talk about them. The Titans, man. So I, I brought this up to you on Sunday evening. I said, what the hell was that? 45 to 26. Derrick Henry has 27 carries, 178 yards, three touchdowns. Where was this when they played in Nashville two weeks ago? I mean, what, what do we even say about this? The Colts got completely dominated at home. And, I mean, this Titans team is now 8-3. and three. They look like contenders. Yeah. No, they look like they finished the season last year. I don't know. I, this is – it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Uh, the Panthers go on the road to the Vikings, and they lose by a point. This was a great game, by yes. the way. Give up 18 fourth-quarter points, and this is the second game this year that they have missed on a last-second kick. Mm-hmm. They, they've lost it on on a missed field goal at the end. Uh, uh you know, Dalvin Cook, it wasn't it wasn't Dalvin Cook that got the win for him. 18 carries, 61 yards. Kirk Cousins. Like every now and then he has one of these kind of games where he just shows up and it's just it it's completely this unexpected. Without Thielen. Without yeah. Thielen. Oh yeah. Uh I bet they trade Thielen's ass right now. I mean, maybe. Like it, it, Thielen seemed to be like his safety blanket, but man, uh no. Justin Jefferson is just so he's he's just a two just touchdowns, a, an amazing yeah. seven receptions on thirteen targets had seventy yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Busy Johnson seven receptions, seventy four yards. Kyle Rudolph had seven receptions for sixty eight. Chad Beebe had seven for sixty three. Dalvin Cook had four for twenty one. Like they they were moving the football. I mean it it was fascinating. <laughs> I just I they, the game made no sense. Okay, I, I thought the I thought the Panthers had won this in the third quarter. Because they, they took a massive lead in this game. I mean, it was like 21 to 10. And I thought, there is no way. And then they just open up. Like, they open up a can in the fourth quarter, and uh, and the Panthers could not finish it off. Uh, your Patriots. Hey, let's talk about your Pats for a little bit. Cardinals go up to Foxborough and take an L back home with them, 20 to 17. Tell me what happened here. I know you watched every play of this. Yeah, uh, they ran the football really well. Cam Newton looks bad. They play great defense. That's just what happened here. They they played unbelievable defense, um, and and uh, they controlled the game. They shut down Kyler Murray. They shut down this offense. Is what Bill does. Takes the best player you've got, Hopkins, and said, uh, "You might as well just go home today because you're not going to catch the ball." And yeah, five he five receptions for fifty five yards. Hey, uh, so you sent over to the group chat. Um, you were very upset oh. about a call in that game. You felt like it was completely rigged that they were screwing fourth, fourth with the fourth quarter. Okay. The Patriots have Patriots have a punt return for a touchdown. Okay. And in a game that was tied 10 to 10 at the time, seven points is a big freaking deal. Okay. And they called it back for one of those blindside hits, all right? And it was as clear and clean a block that you've ever seen. The Somehow the guy blocking was way in front of the guy trailing, and he was catching the receiver, and he turned, and he squares him up, literally stands directly in front of him drops his shoulder and lets the guy just run into him and he just blasts the hell out of him. And they threw the blind side and they took the touchdown off the board, which now because the Patriots offense sucks, they don't score. And I I was furious. I thought it was going to cost them the game, a game in which in the fourth quarter, it's 10 to 10 and you take seven points off the board. That's, that's the game right there. Yeah. I was I was furious. I was furious. Oh, you you most certainly were. There there were words that cannot be repeated. So. Yes, I mean, because here's the thing, man. If we if we get beat, we get beat. I don't mind getting beat. All right, you you can't take it from them though. You just you just can't. Yeah, uh, Damien of course jumps in. Wait, a Pats fan calling rigged? That's a first. That's a- oh god, Damien. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear from you. You cry, baby. <laughs> Okay, Casey uh, jumps in. He said, Jeremy Chin is a beast. He's the steal of the draft. He He's playing pretty well. Like, he's definitely doing that. Uh, your last crap said the Cardinals are who we thought they were. Uh, Casey's trying to jump in with the Chiefs letting the Bucks cover. Uh, let's, let's talk about that here in just a little bit. The Dolphins 
get the cover over the Jets, 20-3. to three. Ryan Fitzpatrick kind of showed out a little bit. Uh, this was two teams that it didn't look like either one of them really wanted to win. But, you know, Dolphins, better team. They got the W, so they are 7-4 and four on the season now. Uh, the Cleveland Browns go down to Jacksonville. They get a win. Puts them at 8-3. They, you know, it was 27 to 25. It wasn't impressive, but the way that their schedule sets up, like, I mean, they're, they're probably going to have what, 10, 11 but, wins? Well, they got 10. I think they're going to, they got two easy games, two tough games left. Um, there's a world in which the Steelers rest players on that week 17 game. So, you know, if they win 10 games, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. So, you know what I always say? You know, we say winning cures everything, but I actually think that's bullshit. I think it's winning a catchy name, yep. but I think winning hides flaws. And the worst thing that could happen to this team is they're going to win 10 games because yep. they are going to hitch their wagon to Baker Mayfield for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Uh, his We're numbers... going to end up with a Carson Wentz situation. Oh, yeah. Uh, Baker, by the way, 19 out of 29, 258 yards, two touchdowns. Nick Chubb was at the start of the game. 19 carries, 144 yards, one touchdown. He is the one that should be paid. Like, Bottom line, he should be paid, not Baker. But it is what it is. Uh, Casey's jumping in. He said the Browns beat the Titans on Sunday. Uh, mm, I think the Titans I'll do everything this, the Browns that do. That game is going to be fun to watch because you got you talk about the two best run games in football. Yes. Oh, yes. Most certainly. Uh, let's see. That was the Jets in hyperdrive, man. So impressive. Uh, 0.75 points a quarter. <laughs> Yeah, Michael uh, jumped in. He, he wanted to jump in on the uh, the Patriots. He said the blindside block is a joke. You just have to let someone tackle your guy if you have to go back and block a guy. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. that. that so they're trying to do, like, these safety measures. I'm okay with the safety. But, I'm okay with the safety. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely okay with it. And I'm not opposed to the blindside block rule. I, I'm, I'm not. I don't like it when I see it because it looks like it's football, and, and I get it. The problem is, is this was absolutely not close to a blindside block. I mean, he literally stood in front of the guy and squared him up. Yeah. You can find the video on Twitter. It's pretty easily like this is the definition of I'm standing in front of you. You're trying to get by me to tackle my guy. I'm going to block you. That It doesn't get any more square than that. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I, I did see it. And yes, you're right. It was a terrible call. Terrible call. Uh, the Saints beat the Broncos. That was fully expected. Uh you know, 31-3. to three. However, Taysom Hill, after a massive week against the Falcons, he comes back this week, 9 out of 16, passing 78 yards, one interception. Uh, Latavius Murray showed out in this game, 19 carries, 124 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know what to make of this. Uh, I'm not making anything out of it. I think a lot of this was game plan, and I also think a lot of this was the Broncos knew they were uh, backed up, and they just threw everything they had defensively at them. Kendall Hinton, by the way, Denver uh, quarterback for this game, one out of nine, 13 yards, two interceptions. So, again, for all those guys that think that you could complete a pass in the NFL, this guy was a state champion quarterback in high school. He played quarterback in college and could do nothing, absolutely nothing in this game. So, uh, Phillip Lindsay, uh, he, he got hurt in this game, didn't he? Like, I think I think he uh, might be out for the next Yeah, uh, I think I, I don't know if he was hurt. I mean, he didn't finish the game, but. Yeah, I, don't yeah, I know think how bad it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, from what I saw today, there's a chance he's not going to play like for the next couple of weeks, maybe. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. Whew, hey, I didn't know it was that bad, but yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's why Royce Freeman got in the game. So, uh, Casey said the Broncos quit. Mm. Oh, probably. I mean, yeah, it's hard to keep fighting when you know you can't win. Uh, Chai City jumps in and said, does anyone else outside of Chicago think the Bears are pitiful? I want to tear down from President Phillips to Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy all gone. Uh, Michael said, Denver gets thrown under the bus. And then Michael said, yeah, he got banged up. Talking about Philip Lindsay, bone bruise, MCL sprain. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about uh, the 49ers right quick. They get a win. They got a bunch of their dudes back. Nick Mullins actually played okay. Uh, Cam Akers looked good. Nine carries for 84 yards and a touchdown in this one. Debo, hey, Debo coming back, looking good. 11 receptions, 133 yards. That 49ers offense, man, they they know how to compete with that division. And the Rams could not get it done. Aaron Donald was about as mad as you could ever get about that ball game. Like, at him, him throwing his helmet there towards the end, man, I was, I loved it. I absolutely, loved, not, not because I don't like Aaron Donald. Obviously, I love him. He's a short dude like me. And he's stocky, and he's he can. I mean, the dude is a 
beast. He's unbelievable. But the 49ers, man, like, there's just something about Kyle Shanahan having having their number. Like, I, I don't know what it is. But uh, but the 49ers moved to five and six. You know, obviously, they are not quitting on this season. Um, I thought they might at some point, but they are continuing to compete. So, no, man, Kyle's a football guy. That, that team is ran by John Lynch, who's a football guy. Those guys don't quit. They keep fighting. They don't mind getting beat, but you're going to have to beat their ass. They're not going to hand it to you. So they are they are currently at five and six. Here's what they got left. They got the Bills, Washington, the Cowboys, Cardinals, and the Seahawks. Uh, is there a world in which they get to eight and eight? And because I think they can beat Washington, I think they can, I think they can beat the Cowboys. It, they can probably beat either. And they the can Cardinals. beat either of those teams in their division. Yeah, and so they move to eight and eight. They got a shot at the playoffs. I think I, they're going to get to nine, but. I think you're probably right about that. But there are seven teams getting into the playoffs now, and it could be yeah, eight. Yeah, the, the NFC stacked, though. That's the problem. The 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 Bucks are, are already going to take one of those. They've already got seven or eight wins. So they're going to they're gonna take they're gonna take one of those spots. The other two are going to the uh the West Coast team, but you know, you gotta jump the Rams. I, you gotta jump the Cardinals. I will tell you this. Uh I know that the 49ers are one of those teams that is hoping and praying that this Ravens and Steelers game ends up getting canceled. Because if it gets canceled, that means that we are moving to eight playoff teams. That's right. And if that happens, the 49ers they have a good in. shot. So I think they are in. Uh, the Chiefs get a win 27-24 over the Broncos. This was the uh, the prime time big spot game on Fox. It was, you know, all this hoopla, Tom Brady against uh, Patrick Mahomes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Chiefs go up 27-10 to 10 and then just kind of coast it to the end. It, it, it got a lot closer than I think people thought it would. Uh, Mahomes, 37 out of 49, 462 yards and three touchdowns. Just absurd. I mean, just, it, he he's ridiculous. He's like, really good at football. <laughs> he is, that's about the uh, best, most generalized way that you could say that. <laughs> no hoopla around it. Just, he is really good at the sport that he plays. Yeah. He's, he's unreal. Um, I just, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, not much more to say about this. I, the Bucks are 7-5 and five right now. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this team. Like, I just, they, they have not looked good in weeks. Like they, no, they had the I mean, one, they, they had the one big like a, a blowout win over the Panthers, but they just it, something looks wrong there, man. I don't know what it is. Like you're do you just agree? talking two weeks in a row, they played two of the best teams in the world that could be playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, but they're supposed they to be got one beat of those by teams. the Saints. They got beat by no, they're not as good as the Saints and they're not as good as the Chiefs. What do you want me to say? It, well. Getting blown out by those teams is not just a black mark on your resume. Lots of people have done it. I mean, you you got a valid point there. You have got a valid point there. Uh, the last game of the night, this was Sunday Night Football. The Bears headed over to Lambeau Field, and the Packers put a whooping on them, at forty-one to twenty-five. This was uh, this was forty-one to ten. Yeah, this at was the end of the third game. quarter. Uh, it wasn't even worth talking about. But we do have a lot of Chicago guys in here that yeah. uh, that want to like. Obviously, we've got some guys that are talking about the Bears going ten and six. They'd have to win out. Uh, no, those people are insane. I think there's, Casey said that. I think I think he's insane. I, looking at the schedule, uh, they got the Lions, they got the Texans, they got the Vikings, the Jags, and the Packers at home. Um, all right. Well, outside of that Packers game, they might be favored in all those games. Holy shit! Yeah, they so they do. This have, is a problem. They're gonna win a bunch of games, and then everybody's gonna be like, "Well, we gotta run it back. We can't fire anybody. Bullshit. Fire no, everybody. They need to." <laughs> so Nagy. Uh, said Monday his team needs to wake our tails up after Sunday's flat-out embarrassing loss to the uh, to the Packers. Uh, Trubisky was, it, like, it, the numbers look okay, but he was awful. Like, obviously, he had garbage time scores there. Uh, but 26 out of 46, 242 yards, three touchdowns. I don't want to hear. Like, I don't want to hear. He's, I don't want to see another. I don't want to see a single stat of his after the third quarter. And he just set all that shit on fire. Yeah, 41 to 10 after three is... Just, I mean, what are we doing? So, like, that's it. it you, don't give me garbage time bullshit. Um, <laughs> Chai City said Trubisky may go down as the worst draft pick ever. With who they passed up, <laughs> Mahomes and Watson, name a worst draft pick at the number two overall spot. Yeah, I and can't. you moved up to get it. You gave up another first this following year to get it. Yep. That's why Ryan Pace, and I've, and I've said this from the 
day after that draft, you need to take that guy and hurl him off the Michigan bridge. Um, just, just I'm talking collar belt loop hurl off the Michigan bridge. Uh, Havoc brings up a valid point here. He said the Titans fired their head coach after a playoff win, and it was totally the right move. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. What was his name? Um, Matt or no, Mike? Uh, God bless America. I cannot remember it. But yeah, he he won a game at Kansas Mike City. Mike Malarkey. Malarkey. That's it. Uh, won a game at the Chiefs, like with Alex Smith and Andy Reid and all that kind of stuff. Won a playoff game. Got destroyed by the Pats the week after, and it was the furthest the the Titans had been in the playoffs since the Super Bowl, like back in '97 or whatever it was. And and they 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 realized, hey, even though we got as this win, it, like as soon as you know you have a losing hand, fold it. They brought in Vrabel, and uh, although the the regular season win total has not gone over nine, uh, they have been a substantially better program. Since then, yeah. now I think they will break nine this year, uh, but they they've been nine and seven for the last four years. It's insane. But I, I'm telling you, listen, you, you can't do it with quarterback because because this almost happened to the Jags. This almost happened to the Jags. Think so. How bad the Jaguars are right now? Think about how bad of a position they would be in if, let's say, they don't get they don't cough up that game that AFC Championship game to the Patriots. Okay, yeah. let's say let's say. Boyle, Blake Boyles wins that game. And let's say when they play the Eagles, we don't know what happens, but that defense was pretty amazing for the Jags. And let's say, I mean, hell, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Let's say Blake Boyles wins a Super Bowl. He's now the Jacksonville quarterback at 30-something million a year. And you, your, your team is set back another decade. This is the problem is, is sometimes we – we let somebody, uh, the Browns are going to do this. They're going to say, holy shit, Baker Mayfield led us to 10 wins. Now we got to, we got to lock him up. We got to pick up, not only just pick up that fifth year option, but we also have to pay him. We have to give him a big contract. No, you do not. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's okay to let somebody ride their contract out or to say, you're good. We appreciate what you've done but you're not getting us over any humps. You are not the we reason what we why are we went you. 10 and 6. Yes. Yeah. You, you, know you know are why not. we went 10 and yeah. 6. And so we are going to move on. That's what the Titans did. They said, Mike Malarkey, we appreciate everything you've done. But you, this is your ceiling right here. And this ain't where we want our ceiling to be. And so if we have to go backwards to go forward, we will. We're going to say goodbye. Yep, I agree. It's it, The Bears need to do it. The, the, a lot of teams need to do it. They, they, like I said, the Broncos need to do it with their quarterback right now. Right now, go out and 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 call these teams that the the Matt Staffords of the world and say, hey, can you come play for me? Because we're a quarterback away from being pretty damn good. Yes, I agree. At Stefanski, I think with a quarterback would be unbelievable. unbelievable. Yes, yes. I'm going to tell you this. There are pictures floating around the internet. I watched every snap of that game. There are pictures floating around the internet. There's. There's a pass play that happened early in the second quarter or late in the first quarter where Baker misses her uh, uh, tight end, one of the tight ends. Joku or? I don't know. It wasn't in Joku. It was either Bryant or uh, or the, the guy from Atlanta. Ah, shit, his uh, name went gone. Anyway, yeah, um, anyway was, go ahead. one of the big white tight ends. Anyway, wa- I mean, wide open. Nobody's within 15, 15 yards of it. Right, Austin Hooper. Okay. Hooper, that's it. It's one of those two. Nobody's within 15 yards of him, all right? And Baker throws it and misses him wildly, okay? And then they end up settling for a field goal there. In the still frame of that that's going around Twitter, he didn't just miss Hooper. He Also, Hunt was wide open underneath, and if he catches the ball, there's nobody within eight yards of him, and he's on the three-yard line. He walks into the end zone. There were two guys – could not be more open all day long. Guys were wide ass open in that game. That's scheming, my friend. That yes, Jacksonville's not good. That is Stefanski scheming the hell out of that game. Uh, Chai City said, "Would Pat Fitzgerald be a good coach in the NFL?" He said, "Asking for a franchise that needs a head coach." <laughs> the Bears. Uh, I I kind of think he would because I think he's a I think he's a really good coach. 
I think he knows how to run an organization. I think he does as well. I think he does as He's well. He's got to hire great coordinators and trust them to do their jobs. Uh, Ryan Johnson said, I think Chris Wentz said that Carson Wentz is a favorite quarterback in the NFL. Uh, no, four, four years of this show, I will guarantee you, Chris has never said anything nice about Carson Wentz. <laughs> he wanted them to fire Carson Wentz and keep Nick the, Foles. The second the, the second the confetti was falling down, they had people offering them two first-round draft picks for Carson Wentz. And I said, sell that son of a bitch. Sell him right now. The confetti has fallen. You get the <laughs> most amount of money you can ever get. He's having an MVP-type season before he gets hurt. I don't care. You sell that horse. You sell that horse right now. Yep, you got that right. it was all fool's gold. Uh, Ryan Johnson said, Gary got some cool lighting in that room. Yeah, it's not bad, right? Not bad. Uh, Blue Hawk said, uh, wide open, and Havoc said, Malarkey would not have benched Mariota and uh, and saved the season. Ain't, ain't nope, that the truth? That, that's 100% right. Once again, it took stones to bench Marcus Mariota, the number two overall draft pick, the franchise. Nope, for a guy who's a retread that nobody thought had any talent. Yep. Yep, I agree. I'm just telling you, man. I it takes these are not easy decisions to make. It's not easy to cut loose from the guy you drafted early and say I messed this up. It's not easy. These these franchises have to do it. It's not easy to cut bait from the guy you just paid 30 million dollars to and say, "Look, we cocked this one up." Yeah. Okay? We got to figure it out. You just can't just double down on your loss though. That's just Un- unless stupid. you're okay with foolish. losing. Like, and that's the only thing that I can assume here is that they're okay with losing. Uh, Blue Hawk said that Mayfield did the same thing last week, and Miller said no, it was Landry and Hunt wide open in the middle of the field for a touchdown to either inside uh, or either inside the ten yard line. Well, um, the still frame that I have is is the Hooper. It's one of the tight ends and Hunt. And so, the, so it probably happened. Frame. So no, it happened multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> multiple times. Didn't end up with touchdowns on those plays. Settled for field goals because he missed these guys wide ass open. What was weird is, text to one of my Cleveland friends, there were guys covered like blankets, and he was he was throwing lasers. And it's just like he just – it's one of those things where the pitcher could throw the baseball through a teacup, but he can't throw the ball from first to first. Like, you know that? Yeah, I know what you're like, talking about. I got to underhand this one because I don't know how to throw it 25 feet. You, but I can throw it 60. It's the kind of the same thing. Guys were covered, and he was making great throws. Great yep. throws. Guys wide open that if they catch this ball, it's a touchdown. Nothing. And he, and he can't get Just them. Can't get them. Uh, Damien said the Bears need Jim Harbaugh as their coach. Uh, I wouldn't mind Jim. I actually think Jim's going to come back to the NFL and be really good. I, I think he'd be better there than in college. Uh, college I think he's really good. I think he hates 18-year-old kids. That's what I really think. That's the truth of it. He don't want to be around no 18, 19-year-old kids. Uh, Blue Hawk wants to know who South Carolina is going for as a head coach. We talked about that earlier, but it looks like it's down to Shane Beamer and Billy Napier. Uh, the Eagles should have kept Nick Foles and traded Wentz. Absolutely. I was right there with you. Um, let's see. Brett Veet said he was the best football player he's ever seen. Um, if he saw that, how come no other? Uh, he was talking about uh, uh, Trubisky. So that's why they ended up taking that. Um, K Storm coming in on on your side said BS. Chris never said that about Wentz. No, and uh, never. Michael Fritz said, uh, "What is it with these franchises holding on to bad players? Elway's guilty of the same. Houston saved yes, him by bidding. Elway's Brock. really bad at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's going right? to get saved. They they got a Baker Mayfield situation right now. They got a Baker. Drew Locke is just good enough to make you think, oh, this guy can play. But we have seen his ceiling, man, and it and it ain't great." Okay, and he is going to turn the ball over in crucial situations. You want to live your entire life with Kirk Cousins? Be my guest. Yeah, be my damn guest. But I don't want that. Uh, Michael Curtis wants to know if we will be broadening our horizons and covering the FCS football uh, season in March. Probably. That, that's my guess. There's not going to be a whole lot going on. Uh, it, you know, we've got the NCAA tournament that we'll be talking about. Uh, but I would imagine that we will be talking some FCS football. Uh, in March, yeah, because we'll be, we'll be talking a little bit. Yeah, well, are, are, do we know that all FCS teams are going to try to play? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're doing like the full NCAA FCS. Thing. Well, obviously, a lot depends on the vaccine and what the yeah, numbers yeah. look like and everything because they may just shut it down again. So, either way, we shall see. All right, you guys have uh, 
Let's see. Did I miss your guys' picks for tonight's game? Yeah, we're both on on Seattle. We think the Eagles are trash. Now, who knows? With that said, the Eagles will probably end up covering. But the Eagles against the spread are pretty terrible this year. So, you know, I, I do still like the Eagles, um, and Chris likes them as well. Or sorry, I do still like the uh, the Seahawks, and Chris likes them as well. So, yeah, we're uh, we're riding with Russell Wilson. So we're, we're gonna let Russ cook, and uh, and he's gonna cook some Eagle this evening. Uh, will you guys do mock drafts and Final Four brackets? Uh, I don't know about. Uh, yeah, well. I don't know about a mock draft. We'll definitely be talking the NFL draft, and we will certainly do Final Four brackets. So, If things are opening back up, Chris is going to be in Cleveland for the draft. There you go. Uh, who do we have to win the Super Bowl? Uh, man, I hadn't thought about it. Let's let's talk about that on Wednesday. Let's, let, okay. let's do that on Wednesday. Let's, let's go on and get out of here. All right. Uh, tonight, of course, Monday Night Football. You guys go do your homework. Watch some NFL tonight. And then, uh, of course, we will have, I guess, NFL on Wednesday. I guess. It, who knows? Either way, uh, we will be on SBR tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for our Deep Dives and Picks show uh, for the college football weekend coming up. And it's going to be a good time. So uh, there's some fun games this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Do us a favor. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Subscribe everywhere you need to be subscribed. Do us a favor. We are killing the podcast game right now. Go and subscribe to the podcast. Leave a nice five-star review on Apple. The the subscriptions and downloads and all that help out. The reviews, for whatever reason, help the algorithm even more. So do that for us. Help get us out in front of some more people. We would certainly appreciate that. And, uh, and share the show out. So Chai City said, uh, love the show, fellas. Good night. Hey, We appreciate it. You night. guys are killing the podcast. That's We're just dancing about. monkeys, okay? We you just that right. we just run our yak. And, and, you know, we have a lot of fun doing that. So we'd appreciate you letting us keep on doing it. So... <laughs> We appreciate all of you. Uh, Thanks for jumping in the chat, of course, and for sharing the show and doing everything that you do that make it possible for us to do this. We certainly appreciate all of you. Uh, Chris, anything else we need to hit? That's it. That is it. All right, we will be back tomorrow over on SBR. We hope to see you all there. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and let's cash some tickets. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.